Oh, hello. It's me, Trable of Arabia, here live, pre-recorded in Japan. Uh, and I've been wanting to record a YouTube video for a while. <laughs> I've got so much time on my hands, nothing going on. And I figured that, you know, I would potentially, I'd, I would consider streaming like either my art or maybe like the games that I play and stuff like that. But in the case of games, you're you're not able to really interact with an audience. You can't really look at the questions that they're posting as like the stream is going. With art, uh, it's kind of puts you on the spot. It would be fun, but again, like if, if you don't really feel it, then all of a sudden you're just like, I want to do a stream of me working. And then next thing you know, it's like done. There is, it's all gone. Uh, you basically are like, oh, I'm, I'm drawn. And then you walk away from it like 10 minutes later and your audience is just like, what, what the hell happened? Uh, so I'm going with a suggestion uh, by someone uh, uh, that follows me on Tumblr to um, do some of the junk and stuff that I find and get in Japan while I'm here. You know, like the, the weird, random, not even weird. It's just, it's just the stuff. Like there's a lot of goods and like items that you can get here that you can't possibly get uh, in the US unless you're like ordering online and know what specifically to look for. Um, so I figured I'd give that a shot. So uh, let's see. <clears throat> One of my favorite items that I come across uh, always in the children's section of any grocery store is uh, a series of like 144th scale uh, models of uh, planes from World War II or, or in this case uh, tanks. And they're, they're basically just little like snap together models like pre-painted stuff like that. It's, it's a fun goofy little distraction. Uh, but what caught my about this one uh, was particularly great was that it's this world tank with with for some reason totally unnecessarily cute tank girl uh, I mean thankfully not cute tank girl where the girl is a cute tank uh, but rather just a cute girl who happens to be dressed as a tank commander pilot uh, with a series of uh, like Chiha and like other like an amphibious Japanese tank from World War II so I was just like, I'm like, oh man, I got to totally check this out. Uh, and so I got it. It made the tank and it was adorable. It's tiny. It is a 144 scale tank. Hold on. <laughs> it's coming at you. Oh, it's so small and out of focus. Look how it's like. It's, it's just a hair bigger than a penny. Um, also, I like shooting at this off angle because looking straight at you, like if I put it dead on uh, from where, from the screen and all that, I'd feel kind of a little weird. Uh, but so, tiny tank. And the other cool thing about it is that, um, is that with the instructions, uh, it comes, it's a uh, kind of a sketchy style uh, reminiscent of a series of articles and uh, little uh, art pieces that uh, Hayao Miyazaki made for a Japanese modeling magazine uh, where he would do uh, that's kind of also where like Porco Rosso originated from was from uh, cartoons for this magazine uh, these little inserts that give information about the tanks their design and stuff like that with detailed drawings in kind of a sketchy form are very reminiscent of that and I really dug that the uh, the planes that I've gotten so far haven't had that uh, otherwise that'd be an even bigger uh, selling point for them they're like I think it was like a buck or something like that they're super cheap and they're just these goofy little things I probably look I probably look the fool every time I get them uh, Elfie uh, my wife got um, got two models from a store called Yorizuya. Uh, Yorizuya's are kind of like, it's like a thrift store, kinda, where the prices on items are still pretty much normal. So if you're used to paying $60, $70 for a pair of jeans, you can buy used jeans for 60 or 70 dollars um but of course you know on the flip side you have designer items designer clothes that are like sold for like eight 
$900, but at a Yorizuya, you could be able to get those for 150 or if they're really on sale, maybe like 10 bucks. So it's 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 a toss up, and everyone is different. Everyone has different like you know specialties. There's a uh, one in either Aomori or Hachinohe. Those are or Hirosaki. Might have been Hirosaki. Hirosaki or Aomori. One of those two uh, had like a great men's selection, but not a particularly great women's selection. Um, anyway, uh, one of the things that they sell is. Um, Pachinko machines, uh, but also tires uh, and electronics and gashapon items and manga and all sorts of shit. But they also sell models, and they usually have those like kind of in dedicated sections. So Elfie picked up uh, a Flapter model from Castle in the Sky, uh, which looks pretty cool. <laughs> I'm really excited to see like how this turns out when she starts working on it. Except, one of one of the things I'm really not looking forward to this guy is uh, is you're just like oh yeah like you, cool you get to make you get to make your the main characters out of uh, Castle in the Sky. Except that uh, where where did it go? Oh there it is. Uh, except that like how would you do? You know their faces would probably be kind of hard to paint that on, right? Oh. Oh no, no, it's probably easy because their faces are are decals. You you have to cut out, dip in water, and then carefully remove and apply onto the face the decals for this uh, for this model. Which I'm not. I can't. I can't even imagine what a pain in the ass that would be. Let alone the fact that you definitely have to seal that kind of thing because if you just leave it on there, it will dry up and flake off. Uh, she also picked up, and this I feel is like all like just as cool, if not cooler, is a Nausicaa riding Kai, a big bird monster thing. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how this one turns out. This one, no, none of the D ID cows. You just have to be very careful and paint them on yourself. Um, the molds on them are okay. If I remember correctly, these models are from like the 90s, like maybe early 2000s. It's hard to remember. They recently released, uh, or not recently, like the last few years, uh, re-released a, a special edition of the uh, bad guy tank uh, that Miyazaki designed for that modeling magazine I mentioned earlier. Uh, I found one of the older editions of it. The new one has the entire little pig tank crew that came with it. Uh, I picked that up and made it. I'm not showing it to you because I don't want to get up and walk over and leave all of you possibly people or maybe <laughs> just myself going back and rewatching this uh, alone. Um, recently, uh, we went up to uh, Asamushi Aquarium, which... Is pretty nice. It's it's got it's got its charm. It's it's quality. It's it's got its sad stuff. It might have dolphins. It might have marine mammals. It may not be the best environment for any of them, but it's got cool octopuses and some cuttlefish, and it's got some gashapon machines. And I love gashapon machines. You put in like three bucks, and you get crazy crap that could be anything you could get little pokemon you could get like a, a little uh a pikachu you could get uh which is still a pokemon uh you could get uh tiny samurai ducks it's whatever it's whatever you want they've got everything we've got all sorts of shit from a uh, gash pond machine so in this case uh the gash pond machine was selling tiny purses little coin purses because it's you don't use cards here really it's all currency and so uh, denominations below ten dollars basically are all change, and because lots of stuff here is less than ten dollars, we need a lot of change. Uh, so, Gashapon finds were these tiny little coin purses, which are adorable little sea animals. In this case, look at this little whale shark. Oh, and you just, you just, he's got this cute little face. You just zip his head right open, just put the coins right inside. Oh, look at me! I've got, oh, I'm a, I'm a hand puppet. Oh, well, never mind. Anyway, 
Uh, I also, uh, I tried again because they had an ore fish, which I thought would be rad. I think they also had a mola mola, a sunfish, which I was trying to get that one for a friend of mine. Um, I also got this shrimp, long shrimp. Uh, this would actually be a terrible coin purse because it's about as big as some of the coins. Uh, and it's really long, so the minute you open it up, the coins just like fly out. And it's too long for pencil and pens. So... No idea what the fuck the shrimp's supposed to be doing. Oh, that's right. I'm going to have to mark this as explicit, all right, because I curse a lot. Fuck. Uh, one of the cute things about this, let me see whether or not I can get this clear, uh, is the tag. No, that won't be clear. Anyway, the tag is a adorable little great white shark going uh, on a seal but they're both smiling. They both love it. Probably a little bit gross, but eh, whatever. Oh. Uh, so uh, one of the other things that is very popular nowadays, it, it, it didn't, it used to be popular, became unpopular, and re-became popular again, uh, and forgive me if I'm pronouncing this wrong, because as far as, like, a Japanese word go, it's not like Yorozuya or, you know, like Aomori or anything like that. Uh, the word doesn't look like a standard Japanese word to me, so I kind of don't know if I'm even pronouncing it right. But the, uh, the very popular now, again, as a gift and almost like as a postcard of place that you've been, the Tenegui. Tenegui? Tenegui. <laughs> anyway, uh, Tenegui are uh, screen printed, dyed uh, pieces of fabric uh, of varying lengths and widths, usually uh, kind of rectangular in shape, thin, long. Uh, this one's kind of, it's hard to see in this uh, light and these colorings, uh, kind of a teal color. Um, but the uh, the tenegui was functionally just like an all-purpose piece of fabric. You could use it as a headband. You could use it as a scarf. You could use it to clean your hands. Uh, lots of hand washing, hand rubbing here. Uh, lots of uh, lots of various uses. You could use it to cover up shelves. You could use it to wrap up gifts and items. You could use it for er everything under the sun. I've become obsessed with these. Because I love just colored pieces of fabric that you can do just about anything with. Like you can use them in the bath as like a hand towel or just like you could drape it over your head. Or if you sit in the bath and your shoulders are cold, you could be like, oh, I'm putting the tenegui on. Uh, or you could be like, oh, I'm leaving this in the kitchen. I'm going to, oh, I got to pick up a hot pan. I'll use this tenegui. Or oh, I got to wipe this thing. I'll use a tenegui. Or the other day I was making uh, hash browns and I needed to dry out the potatoes. So I just threw them in the tenegui and... Like, basically, uh, spun it around and then squeezed out all, like, the potato water. Uh, but so they're, they're a great all-purpose little piece of fabric. And the thing is that towns, exhibits, businesses, everyone sells their own iteration of a tenegui. Like, it, memorials, like, everything. So you can get commemorative tenegui to remember place that you've been and things that you've done. Uh, and so, like, and some are nicer than others. We got this one from, like, a bookstore uh, at the local Shimoda Mall. Um, and that that's, uh, or Aeon Mall, I guess. it's They call it the Shimoda Mall, but it's Aeon is the company, and there's lots of them up here in the north. Uh, but no, it's, uh, the, the Tenegui is uh, fantastic. It, it, it is not... Uh, hemmed at the sides or at the edges uh basically to allow for water to base to drop out of it more quickly it dries faster that way it will like stain it will uh get softer it will uh rip apart slowly uh and will that will give it basically character and all sorts of stuff but so uh i i just love having these things just hanging them off everything i can find and just putting them all over the damn place they're relatively cheap, too. Um, <clears throat> also, uh, at the base, uh, is a, uh, is a, there's businesses that come through, uh, just small businesses, uh, and individuals usually selling, like, specific or small items, either things that they've made, 
uh, or things like there's a sock vendor that sells all sorts of kooky, crazy socks uh, that are all like kind of like from Japan. There's people that make like flower art or paper art and things like that. And one guy sells antiques. Now, most of the stuff that he sells is uh, Kokeshi dolls, kind of like long, tall, kind of. They're wooden dolls that used to be sold at uh, onsens, uh, hot springs. Um, also, he'll sell, like, uh, kendo armor, which you see on his, like, receipts, like, lots of people have bought kendo armor for some reason. Just use kendo armor. And it's probably not even old. It's just, I guess a person just sees something that looks vaguely like a samurai's armor. It's just like, that's cool. I'll, I'll get that. Um but so uh, I noticed that one of the things that he had, uh, it looked super cool. It was a Pilgrim's book. Uh, this is it right here. Uh, the Pilgrim's book, this one's for the 34 Shrine uh, Complex in, uh, uh, 34 Shrine Complex uh, in Saitama, uh, which is like kind of northwest of Tokyo. You go through it on your way up if you're taking the like Shinkansen up this way. Uh, but so what a pilgrim's uh, book is, and these have been around since the Edo period when people had kind of like the free time to make it a purpose in their life to go from shrine to shrine to shrine. Uh, you would buy the book, uh, like kind of a little guidebook, and uh, you would go through a number of sh uh, shrines or temples in a specific area, in this case Saitama, 34 different temples. Uh, and then at each temple, you would get the signature of the head monk, uh, as well as its special stamps, including information about what day uh, you visited. Uh, yeah, usually this is like a message about, uh, like this is describing what the temple is, uh, anything special about the temple, and then a stamp or art representing um, something special about that particular temple. And so the calligraphy is gorgeous. Uh, the book, hey, this was done, uh, this Pilgrim's, uh, particular Pilgrim's book was only done in 2007, so it's not exactly like old or anything like that. It's just that it's a very, it's a very unique and interesting piece of artwork, uh, especially considering like the, the beautiful drawings and like I know one of the, uh, one of the temples inside the page uh, has beautiful calligraphy and stamps and then it has uh, flowers that have been pressed into it, so it would feel a terrible loss to just let it kind of like go moldering in like one of the gajillion antique stores here where it gets buried under a pile or wherever thrown away. Um, but so I, I got that guy. It's missing two sh uh, two of the temples on the uh, on the path, uh, probably because the Saitama Temple uh, pilgrimage isn't as big as some of the ones further south and so a number of the actual temples do not have any sort of like full-time monks or monks really at all uh they're kind of staffed or looked after by the local community as is the case with not just uh, buddhist temples here but also a number of shinto shrines but so uh that that's actually like a majority of the stuff that i've picked up uh, in the past, like, two, three weeks, and so, uh, and I figure that, you know, it's run about 20 minutes already, thereabouts, 18, and I'd let you guys go, since you've probably already tuned out long, long ago, so, if you're looking for anything interesting, or any name drops, or calling out any people that I might know, that's not gonna happen, because I'll let you go, so anyway, what you guys should do is, uh, if you enjoyed this, uh, comment, or message me on any platform which you can find me and ask me questions if you have any questions about living in Japan, being here, things. Remember, <laughs> I haven't been to Tokyo yet, so my question, so your questions are going to have to be kind of like geared towards what's it like living in the countryside outside of major metropolitan areas, uh, because my experience so far has been way different than what I've seen a lot of people describe uh, when it comes to living in places like Tokyo. So. Feel free to message me, comment, like it, do whatever the fuck those fucking nerd ass fucking people do. Uh, and I'll see you guys around the next time I have more kooky stuff that I've bought for no discernible reason. Bye.